This is part two of the video on driving versus driven dimensions, where we will cover two other reasons why the old rule of 95% of the dimensions that appear on your drawing should be driving dimensions. We will take a look at model-based definition and flexible modeling. Reason number two why you can't always use driving dimensions model-based definition or MBD. And this is very similar to what I was showing for top-down design. It's just that driven dimensions have a little more functionality than driving dimensions. It's not that much stuff, but it's stuff that you might be interested in. So as I showed before, if you create a driving dimension, it'll be located underneath the feature that owns them. A driven dimension is its own annotation element by default, it's going to appear in the annotations folder in your model tree. But as I showed with top-down design, you can take those annotation elements and add them to annotation features. Annotation features were a little more necessary, like Creo 2.0, Creo 3.0, but starting in Creo 4.0, functionality that was only available for annotation features was propagated to individual annotation elements, uh, except for notes, symbols, and surface finishes. But for your different dimensions and geometric tolerances, you had all the functionality in an annotation element as you had in an annotation feature. And so the advantage of annotation features is that you can perform feature operations on them, which means things like you can pattern them, copy them, suppress them, or something that might be very useful, include them in a user-defined feature. Another reason that you might want to use annotation features, they might be required by the schema that you are using for model-based definition. But one of the really big advantages that I find for using annotation elements from driven dimensions is the fact that you can designate them. And to designate them, let me turn on my highlighter again. Here for the dimension tab for a created dimension, if you go to the options drop down, there's an option in here to designate. I'll show this bigger in the demonstration. Similarly for an annotation feature, there's an option to designate. When you designate an annotation element, then it is actually going to be available in Windchill if you are using that as your product lifecycle management system. And if you designate it, you also have the ability to designate it as a control characteristic, which means then you can use it in process plans in MPM link, and you can also track those different control characteristics downstream in other operations in manufacturing process planning and this is going to become even bigger in the next few years all right let's take a look at the example of that here i have a model let's go to the annotate tab over here i've got an active annotation plane oh, let me bring open the model tree all right so i've got my model over here let's take a look at showing annotations and again, I like to start by just going down the model tree. And here we can see a number of different annotations over here. So for example, I've got this one. Maybe I want to use this one. Maybe I want to use this one over here and this one over there. I like those three. Let's click the OK button. And then I can grab the individual ones out and let them snap to being in the middle. You know, just clean them up a little bit. And now let me select this one over here, the 410 one. When I select it, here you get the dimension tab in the ribbon. If you go to options over here, you'll notice that all the different options in here are grayed out, especially this designate and the ability to designate it as a control characteristic for sending it to windchill PDM link and MPM link. You cannot do that with a created dimension, but let me excuse me, you can't do that with a driving dimension, a model dimension. But from here, let's now create our own dimension manually, and I'm gonna select an edge over here. Let me hold down the control key and grab this edge over here, 
and let me just let it middle click about over there and after that then I can drag it and snap it over there so here I have the driven dimension you'll notice that the value here is grayed out because I can't change it but if I go to the options tab then I can designate it then I can make it a control characteristic so again this provides an advantage if you are using manufacturing process planning so again that's a little slight little thing that might be of use to you for using driven dimensions instead of driving dimensions and reason number three probably the most important reason why driving dimensions are no longer the end all and be all of detailing in creole parametric flexible modeling little background about what was it about maybe 13 years ago from the time that i'm creating this video ptc bought co-create which is a direct modeler and as a result of that they started incorporating direct modeling capability inside of Creo parametric and direct modeling is very powerful it helps you make changes to parts that are too complex that you can't necessarily edit definition to it allows you to make changes quickly and easily but the problem with flexible modeling is when you make these different changes you might not have the necessary dimensions in order to show on a drawing all right let's take a look at this inside of Creo parametric okay here i have a part open you can see it's got a lot of features in here it's a really complicated part but i have a design change that i need to make i need to make this whole thing bigger so i can select it and then we can try to uh, let's try just an edit command over here might be a little faster than edit definition who knows but you can see it's cranking in here let's wait until it comes up all right my dimensions are now visible like i mentioned this is really complicated part over here this is the dimension that i want to change this height dimension 28 i can double click on it so now I can enter in a value. Let's say that I need this to be a value of 32. I'll hit the enter key. And again, it's cranking. This is just a really, really complex part. You can see I'm already getting a warning in here. It's going to tell me that, hey, I'm going to have some prompts if I use that as the value. Let me go to regenerate. So lo and behold, in the notification center, it's telling me that I've got two regeneration failures. And if I scroll down over here, oh wait, it caused another protrusion to fail. And that protrusion has a lot of children. And then there's a, another feature in here that failed. So this is something that happens sometimes. When you have a really complicated model, you're trying to make a change and it just causes stuff to blow up. And let's say that you inherited this model. You didn't create this model. You're updating someone else's work and you get these failures in here and you're like, oh wait, now I gotta figure out what's going on over here. Maybe changing this is gonna cause other features to fail. You get this cascading series of failures and it just makes modifying these really complex parts too difficult especially if a person didn't design it the way that they probably should have so let's hit the undo button and now we're back to the way we were we don't have all those different failures and all that missing geometry from the children of the failed features now let's take a look at an easier way to make the change i'll go to the flexible modeling tab and then I will select the surface that I want to modify. Then we'll hit the move button. And again, it's going to crank because this is just a really complicated part. Let's give it a moment. Okay, now my dashboard is back. So everything isn't as slow as it normally is. I'm going to use this button over here to change the preview from attached geometry to unattached geometry. Once this changes, it's just going to give me better performance when I actually go to do stuff. All right, now we're back. I'm going to select this surface as my drag location. And I needed to make this a difference of four higher than before. Now I can hit the check mark. 
And in this way, we've implemented our design change. If I scroll down to the bottom, you can see my last feature here is a move feature. So that allowed me to implement the change. The way that I did this, though, is now I have, instead of having an overall length dimension, I have the original length dimension for the protrusion of 28 and this move dimension of 4. So if I was trying to detail this in the drawing, I might have to, or I would have to create a driven dimension instead in order to capture that information. I'm going to take this and edit definition to show you an alternative way. There is a way sometimes of getting the right dimension that you want to show on the drawing. All right, after some cranking, I finally have my dashboard back. Let's change back to the unattached preview. Let's change the method for this move. If I go to the drop down list over here, right now we are doing a standard move. And the other option that you have in here is that you can create a or perform a move by dimension. And so now I can select two entities to define a dimension. I will select this surface over here. Let me rotate the model and hold down the control key and pick this surface over there. So right now that is a dimension of 28. Let me change this to the value of 32 and then hit the check mark and we'll let it crank. The thing about using this particular method here is that now I actually have a model dimension that reflects the depth of that protrusion and I can actually show that dimension on the drawing. But you don't always have that ability if you're using a variety of these different tools within flexible modeling you're not always going to have dimensions that you show and because flexible modeling is so powerful and it's a tool that you should have in your toolbox that's another reason why that whole conventional wisdom about 95 percent of the dimensions that appear on your drawing should be driving dimensions, why that old rule of thumb doesn't necessarily apply anymore like it used to 10 and 20 years ago. So I know that was a really long-winded explanation. This video ended up being a lot longer that, than I intended, but I did want to go into some philosophy about driving versus driven dimensions. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.